Good morning, uh, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Defining Virtuosity. I'm Odin Rathnam, and today I'm actually up at uh, a uh, fishing cabin in the mountains, um, enjoying some nature and drawing some inspiration from that. And when reviewing some videos, I discovered that I had managed to erase one of my tutorials. So I'm re-recording for you now the um, 30th uh, study of Wolfhart, uh, Marked Allegro, which can be played a number of different ways. Um, I've shared some of my practical advice for um, learning these uh, slurred passages in terms of connecting one note to the next, first through chained bowings, then two bow slurs, four bow slurs, and five, finally eight bow slurs, as well as practicing rhythms. So I won't do too much of that. But to remind, we can um, practice learning note to note, dropping the fingers very, very relaxed in each of our tetrachord frames. Um, the first tetrachord frame on the up bow slur um, is a, um, a, a whole step between the second and fourth finger with the third finger in between. So we practice the dropping of the The next tetrachord here has the half steps between one, two, three, four, like this. And we want to make sure that we can negotiate that without any undue tension in the shoulder or thumb. Um, those are the two places I monitor while I independently work out the contractions and extensions in the hand. Like that. And, and we continue to do that throughout the study. But to move more into the study itself, um, it's marked Allegro and should eventually be placed, played quite quickly. I've added turns at the beginning of the second full measure third measure and fourth measure, and then again in bar 9, 10, and 11, in those cases on the second to last note, um, and then later I've added turns at bar 22 on the downbeat, and at bars um, 32 on the two strong beats, and then again at 42 and 43 and 44, so, and then one more time at 46, a little footnote, um, bar 47 um, in the Schirmer edition, a C sharp is marked. I don't believe that's correct, at least not in the harmonic context. Uh, having that C-sharp seems um, out of place. Uh, so I moved that back to a C natural. Um, then uh, I have one more turn um, at bar 58 on the downbeat. A little note on why I'm having these. It's to check the freedom of, of the upper fingers um, when we're playing a lower neighbor to an upper, a lower note to an upper neighbor, that we're free with the upper finger like that, that we're not locked somehow in these joints. Um, that said, the study is performed. <laughs>
Now, um, in terms of some talking points, um, I think it's very important to not lose the sound as we approach the tip and not crush the sound as we approach the frog. So I do uh, encourage you to think a lot about the balance of the bow shifting from being balanced in the pinky to the third, to the second, to the first finger. And that this balance shifts, I'm exaggerating it just so that you can see that that turn would not be nearly as visible when I'm playing it, but I'm feeling it that I'm balancing the pinky. That, that doesn't affect the ability of the hand to be flexible at the changes going from more curled to less curled on up bows and from less curled to more curled on down bows that we have that sense of the balance of the bow. Um, this, this study should be practiced with rhythms. Uh, <laughs> of the fourth finger should be as rhythmical as possible, both the extension and the contraction, and should be practiced carefully. Um, the uh, sections of the piece go all the way to that low G. Then we're in the dominant key. A little bit less second time. Interesting point about this crossing to bar 17. You want to be on the a E string height at the end of the up bow before the down bow stroke is initiated and flexible in the fingers in the C. Or you'll hear strings in between. on that smoothness there. Um, and then in bar 25, um, challenge yourself by having hairpins. Less, more, more, most, less. Distribute the bow that way. again, 27 crescendo into 28 to work on the balance of the bow in the hand. And then again here, grow. Yeah. 
10, 47, C natural. <laughs> This is mastered. Um, I also would like for you to consider practicing it both detache and spiccato because we have now worked very carefully on keeping the balance of the bow across the four planes but we want to check whether or not we can do that while while executing other strokes. So it's very healthy to practice. Uh, <laughs> the four strings like that and still feeling the balance that the arm is relaxed and hanging in each of the four planes as we cross so that's a very very health, health, healthy way of practicing it the other is to practice it with slurs and staccati and this is for um, my uh, students studying caprices um, I, I try to have them apply the staccato stroke to many other passages you can do two plus sixes um, you can do odd numbers, uh, you can do uh, fours plus fours. Uh combinations can be practiced um, in order to master the transition from other fundamental strokes into a staccato without becoming stiff. Um, so there you have it. Uh, that's uh, Wolfhart um, study number 30 recorded for a second time and I hope that this will um, help inform your study. Uh, do make use of um, alternate fingers for uh, tri tritones uh, in the diminished passage at 57, leave the one down on the E natural and learn to comfortably drop your B flat and C sharp independently, your G natural. Then make the G natural uh, an anchor note while you pull the, the one back independently. Make sure that doesn't cause any um, straining of the wrist for the B flat. And then the three drops back. Y for the G. Now, in these kind of passages, this is where I very often see my students' fingertips lock. The, the first joint of the finger becomes stiff and, un, and uncollapsible, and the wrist locks to the thumb. So you can also practice... check that these are always flexible. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please like and share and subscribe to my channel um, and thanks for watching.